Hey everybody, um, my can't barely see it there, but the uh, Robotron is down, has a RAM error. I haven't really messed with it since I got it, so what I figured we'd do real quick is uh, I'll power it on, show the RAM error, um, do some basic troubleshooting steps, and then um, hopefully modify, I don't actually have some replacement RAM, so I'm um, gonna modify a RAM chip to hopefully fix it today. And then later on in the video, I actually do uh, some more RAM modifications. So hopefully um, we'll get Robotron back up and in working here soon. And when it first comes up, you should get some the rug pattern. So it's doing self-diagnostic check. And there you can see it right there. It says uh, RAM error 34. And it will eventually try to uh, boot and play <laughs> factory settings restored that's probably because i have the do cord coin door open i think i'm not sure and let's see what else happens Uh, that's probably because I had it in manual mode or something. I don't know. But then you can see it. I have vertical lines going through it. So let's go. I'll pause real quick and we'll okay, boot it up here at the back. back. And uh, on there's a little LED segment here. So when I um, apply power, we'll actually get some, uh, ran some codes, some diagnostic codes here that will probably match what we saw up in front. Um, but as you can see... It's completely original, except for some I did do a battery mod, and there had been some replacement chips done too, so probably hard to see right there, but I can tell some of the 4116 RAMs have been replaced. And one, oh, let's see here. Well, I'll show you that in a second, but let's go ahead and power it on and watch the LED segment there. And it'll flash three numbers the first one indicating whether it's RAM or not, and then it's chip identifier. So it's code number one means RAM, and then a three is the bank three, which is this bank right here, and then um, chip four. So one, two, three, four. So it should be this one right here, I believe. Um, so yeah, so that's what we see right there. You can see that my voltage LEDs on the power supply are lit. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. And if I can get, um, you can see that the power supply hasn't been recapped or anything. Original caps on everything. So I'll be right back and we'll measure voltage at the chips real quick just to see what kind of voltage we're getting at All the right, chips. We'll try this real quick. I figured we'd just test the voltage. This is the um, voltage coming into the PCB, and the black is black. And see if I can hold that I mean if we go over here I mean the black is negative I mean and we got negative 5.1 on our negative 5 volt line 11 volts there 4.8 on the 5 volt line I'd have to go look in 11.9 there so not sure if we have two 12 volt lines One's 11.9. I'd have to look at the schematic. This one's just 11 and 4.8 and 5.1. So the 5 volts is a little bit low, um, but it should be okay. And can you see? All right, we'll try this again here and see. So what we want to do, and I'm not going to be able to do it this way, but is we want to have our, our black lead over here on our black and then our red we'll do our red lead like this and you can see that's negative 5.17 that's uh, 11.09 4.8 and 11.9 so the 5 volts is a little bit low um, but we'll test it at the chip as well Let's see if I can get this up so 
So I'm just going to, I could put my, um, I think this is negative over here. So we're just testing one of these RAM chips. No, that's not negative. Is this negative? Yeah, that's negative. So that's uh, 12 volts, and these 4116 RAM chips need all three voltage, so it needs 12 volts, which is good. Four point eight, which is close to being, you know, low, but it's still good. Usually, you can go down to um, four point seven five. That's at the bare minimum, and then over here should be our negative five, which you can't see when I'm holding it like that. All right, we'll try to do. Um, let me just grab negative up here. Yeah, we got a uh, negative 5.1. So a little bit high on the negative 5. Negative 5 and 12, usually the variance is 0.5 volts. So you could go all the way up to um, negative 5.5 or as low as negative 4.5. Usually um, the variance of voltage tolerance, I mean, is a little bit more lenient than on the 5 volt. The 5 volt line, it's usually uh, you know 4.75 to 5.25 is the highest. So a little low on that and I think we because I want to look at this power supply too I probably will go ahead and try to do something with the power supply as well um, since it hasn't been recapped who knows I'll, I'll inspect the the headers and stuff like that and maybe uh, do some preventive maintenance there um, but first what we're going to do is we're going to take out this RAM chip here and swap it with another one and see if our RAM code follows the chip so that's what we're going to do first. Okay, right so back. I downloaded the manual real quick. And it does say um, for your RAM locations here, you can see that uh, bank 3, hopefully, you can, there we go. Uh, bank 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be 134. So RAM number 34, which is bad. So we're going to go back and swap that with, let's say, I don't know. Let's do the one next to it. Let's do 24. So we'll swap 34 and 24 and see if the error code follows the chip. Um, and then we'll know that that it's actually a bad RAM chip and not necessarily a power or some other issue. Okay, so we're going to take out one, two, and I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. I'll zoom in a little bit. But you can tell these chips right here look like they're original, but then you get down and you can see some are replaced like this one looks like it's been replaced that one looks original 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 replaced and the this one over here looks like it's replaced the great thing about these Williams games are is that they're all the RAM chips are socketed already which is kind of cool so we're gonna do one two three four we're gonna take this one out the game is off right now That's the chip right there. And we're going to replace it with this one here. Or maybe those are all replacement chips and these are the old ones. Who knows? That's a Texas Instrument one, so we're going to put that one in here. Make sure the notch is still facing the same way. Swap that one here.
I got everything in. Okay. So let's power it up and watch the, um, the LEDs there. One, two, four. So, yep, yeah, it definitely um, followed the bad RAM chip. So, we know that that RAM chip is bad, so we have to go ahead and replace that. And I will do that at the bench. Be right back. Okay, so unfortunately, I looked through all my tools, I mean, all my um, spare parts and stuff, and I don't have any 4116 RAMs. Um, but I did have some 4164 RAMs, and you can actually convert the entire board to 4164s um, and you have to make some mod jumps. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that eventually, but I want to get this game working quickly. And so what I'm going to do is modify, I found this on Atari Age website. Um, and so what you do with the 4164 is you bend, bend up um, pin 8 and connect it to pin 9 over here. So you leave pin 9 in place. And then you um, connect it to uh, uh, pin 8. And then you have, um, yeah, and then you have, uh, right here, you cut off pin number 1. And so if you think about it, so this is where the original 4116 chip is. So pin 9, the board is thinking that pin 9 is 5 volts, okay? And so we need to get that over to pin eight. So we get the 4164 uses five volts on pin eight. So we need to bring that over to nine so it can actually get um, the five volts. And and obviously you can see the address line. There's is seven, I guess, address lines here, or is it eight? Eight address lines here. And you don't need that many on the 4116. Um, so there's no problem with losing that address line. And then, uh, let's see, so that's how we're gonna get five volt over to pin nine. And then what else do we have to do? We have to lift up pin one, cause that shouldn't be connected. And that's where on the 4116, that is actually um, negative five volts. So I think we're good there. So we, where's ground at? VSS is ground, VSS is ground. Okay, so that's in the same um, chip location, chip 16. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna follow the directions right here. Cut off pin number one, um, bend up pin eight, and connect it to pin nine. Uh, so I, I don't know if I'm gonna film all that. Maybe I will, we'll see um, how it turns out, but uh, I'll definitely show you the end result here in a second. Okay, well, Obviously, I wasn't recording or something. I don't know. I have to go back and watch. But there is the jumper. If you, let me see if I can focus. Right there. And we cut off leg one. And that is how you modify the 4164. Hopefully, I record something. Okay, there's our replacement chip. So we le I left that one in there, the original... Um, 34 chip is still there so I placed our 4164 modded chip um, over here in the 24 location and I think I have the orientation right yeah so let's power it up and see what we get Looks good. Yeah. Looks good. There we go. We're back in business. Oh, I now I reset my uh, probably scores and everything. All ROMs okay. And it goes through the RAM test. 
to do that, what you want to do is press the middle button into manual mode and then press advance and that will go start the diagnostics. And I think the rug pattern will just run until you hit advance again. And then it says no RAM errors detected. You can see that. So we'll just go ahead and advance. <laughs> And let's see here. Oh, crud. Whatever. So anyway, it's uh, working. I got to put it back on free play. So um, obviously those voltages aren't great, but um, good enough to get the RAM working. And we did just have a bad RAM chip. And I'm glad I could get it fixed real quick. So... I think the next video I am going to do the board modification and replace all the RAM with 4164s, so um, I'll show you how to do that next.